Hi everyone, welcome to another video. Today we're gonna paint the famous golden albino trout and we're starting right now. <music> to begin with, I chose this trout swim bait because that color is going to look really good on this kind of swim baits. But of course you can do this on any kind of blank, you can do this on a crankbait, you can do this on a jerkbait, on a glide bait. it's gonna look cool on either lure, it's a really cool pattern. But I'm gonna do this on this trout because I think that's gonna look really cool. First of all I got some Createx Wicked Silver in my chamber and we're gonna do the flanks a little bit and this is just to differentiate those flanks from the belly. Um, by giving the sides another color we're gonna create a little bit of a contrast between the belly and the side and that's gonna give more dimension to our lure. And the next color we're gonna use is fluorescent yellow and I'm gonna do the top and the upper sides of the fish. I'm also gonna do the tail and a little bit of the front of the head all in fluorescent yellow. Next up is a fluorescent orange and we're gonna spray the entire top of the lure. And to make it a little bit interesting I'm gonna use this random pattern stencil I once made. And I'm gonna use that to create some random texture on the gill plates and such. Alright, now I got some pearl white in my chamber and I want to brighten up those gill plates a little bit, give them some shimmer back again. So we're going to cover that with a little bit of pearl white. And the leftovers I'm going to do on the belly. Now the next color that I'm going to use is called Glorious Gold from Vallejo, the Game Air range. and. This is, as you can see, a quite dark gold and I really like that because if we spray that darker gold onto that yellow, it's going to stick out a little bit more and it's going to create a little bit of a definition in there. Also, it's a great color to tone down some areas like on the fins and a little bit on the front of the face and around the eye. So I'm going to use that color to do all that. Alright, next up we're gonna put some fluorescent raspberry in our chamber and we're gonna mix this with a little bit of white. I'm also gonna add a little bit of 4050 and some 4011 to reduce it. Now the reason that we added the white is not only to make it a little bit lighter but also to make this paint opaque so it covers everything so that we don't see the yellow or the gold underneath but we get this nice pink tone. Now as you can see that is a very bright pink and I want it to be a little darker so I'm gonna add some fluorescent violet just to tone it down a little bit. Alright so now I toned it down a little bit with fluorescent violet and now I'm liking the color more. Now I got this random tear stencil here that I once made and we're gonna use that to put on our pattern and I make sure there's a nice opaque coat on there. And the 4050 make sure that we can put one heavy coat on there that it's totally opaque and covers all of the yellow. And that's where the 4050 is for in this case. Now I still got the same paint in my chamber and I'm gonna do a light overspray over some of the edges just to make it a little bit more blurry and blend into the background. But before we do change paint, I am gonna add a little bit of Detail Carmine Red just, just to alter this color and make it a little bit more reddish and that's gonna be for the gill plates. 4050 is also going to make it a little bit more transparent. Okay, now the color is too red to my liking, so I'm going to add some fluorescent raspberry. 
and lighten up that red a little bit. All right, now I like it more. I always use a little bit of a test paper just to test the colors on and see how they look on certain backgrounds. Here I test some colors on a little bit of yellow to see if they're opaque enough or I, I test them on white to see how they look on white. And that is just to make sure that I got the right color before I shoot it onto my lure. I'm gonna take this same random texture stencil again and I'm just gonna put some nice shapes onto those gill plates. Now the nice thing about this color is when you spray it lightly over white it's gonna turn a little bit more pink. We're gonna do this fin and we're gonna spray it lightly on there. Another thing we're gonna do with this color is create a little bit of a darker texture inside that pattern. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of this Vallejo Alien Purple. And we're going to use this just to bring a little bit more texture in there. Now I've got some pearl white in my chamber again. And I'm going to brighten up those gill plates a little bit more. And that lateral line as well. I'm going to give it a little bit of a shimmer. It's going to brighten up just a little bit. Alright, and as a final dark tone, I'm gonna use a little bit of Vallejo Game Air Beastie Brown. And I'm gonna use this to give those last few dark tones to the fins and the head and the tail. Alright, and as a last step, we're gonna paint black dots on there. Now I like to paint them because then you have more control over the size and you can decide exactly where you want that spot to be and how big you want it to be and also it gives a really nice natural feeling when you stipple it on there. Now I will be using these tools. These have a little metal ball on the end. They are also available on my web shop. And these tools are useful for a number of things. So I will be using a little bit of Vallejo game color black. Not to be mistaken with the game air because this is the game color. This is for painting. It's much thicker and you can shoot it to, through an airbrush but then you'll need to thin it down significantly. So I'm gonna put a little bit in there. I'm not gonna thin it down because I want it to be quite thick. And I just take some paint onto my I would say brush but it's not a brush on my tool and then we just start stippling away now we'll be using a smaller ball tool and I like to let the spots drift off here and there into that pattern that we have Alright, our lure is finished, so now I'm gonna put the eyes on. These come with the blank. And they look very natural, actually. Now I made two, and this one has dots everywhere on the fins and everything, while this one doesn't, like the, the pattern from Savage Gear itself. And this one is already clear coated, so I'm only gonna show pictures of this one because I will be traveling this week and um, this will not be clear coded before this video gets on YouTube so I'm sorry for that guys but I'm only gonna show this one
Alright guys, so the lure is finished and it looks amazing. It's a beautiful color and it has a real natural feeling. Although this is not a natural pattern at all. It just looks so natural. Looks like it was invented by nature itself. That's how nice it is. And I have to say this one isn't clear coated yet but even if you put more dots on there and if you put dots on the back and the fins as well I find it that it even looks more realistic and it even looks better so I really really like this one as always guys I will leave a link in the description below for all the materials that I used this link will guide you to my webshop and in this way you can support me and this channel. If you have any questions or ideas about lure painting, let me know in the comments down below. Thank you guys for watching and see you next time. Bye bye. Hi everyone. Today we're gonna paint the famous... The next color we're gonna use is a fluorescent yellow. Did I just take the wrong color? Yup, I took the wrong color. Now I got this random crack stencil here that I'm gonna use. Now I got this random stencil here with some crack shaped figures. And I'm also gonna try to make a little bit of a darker texture inside of the pattern as well, just to create some, some more texture in there. Now, as you can see that doesn't become any darker now I've got some pearl white in my chamber again and I'm gonna